Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Russ. Thank you so much again for joining me here in the 81 Crow Studios in glorious frozen Pennsylvania. Um, today we're going to look at something. I've had a lot of requests to cover this topic. Um, and this is something that is very, very key as a fundamental ingredient for your playing. This is something that once you build the muscle memory, you can incorporate this anywhere at any given time. This will become second nature. You won't even have to think about it. You'll just do it. And, you know, this is what truly makes a good musician, you know, it, it's keep your ears open and listen for the little tiny subtle details. So right now we're going to learn one of Earl's little hidden gems that if you listen to any recording, I'm sure you can pick it out now that you know what to listen for. Okay guys, so getting started, this is a, an element that Earl used in, in just about 99% of his playing, if you listen, it's there in all the all the quintessential recordings that he ever put out. Um, this is something that once you become familiarized with, it really becomes second nature, and it's something that helps. You you can play the song like the record, but the devil truly is in all the little tiny details and and the subtle things that he was doing, and this is the biggest one that that I don't hear people doing and it's just so cool and it, it really adds to your playing and it enriches it so what we're doing I'll show you two different ways of doing this on the slide let's okay we'll use Cripple Creek as our example so when when you're playing the B part of Cripple Creek it's not this which is the slide from the second string or rather the second fret on the third string to the fourth fret on the third string that full slide what we're doing is we're stopping at the third string and we're bending up to complete that note and also when we do this or when I do this I don't quite bend to the exact note here I'm a little bit flat just so it rubs your ear just that tiny little bit I mean I'm not talking about you know very flat just just a tiny little bit so looking at it mechanically it's this here I'll do it a little bit faster so I can smooth it out If you watch any of my videos, whenever I do a slide, a hammer on, or a pull off, anything, I'm bending in little, little minute, you know, increments. It's always there because it's something I've trained myself to incorporate all the time because it's one of those details that just adds so much okay so what we're doing is we're viewing our slide this way you're pushing towards the fifth string instead of doing this we're gonna start pushing up right there so two ways of doing this you can use your middle finger or if it's comfortable use your index finger but I, I prefer my middle and starting right here we're gonna bend to get that slide and another way that you can do this is you can use two fingers you can use your index finger and your middle finger and when you do it this way, you are bending with the index finger and then doing a hammer on with your middle. So that looks like this. So those are two two different ways to do that and the best song to practice this this technique and this um, this slide is 
Cripple Creek because if you listen to Earl play the B part... That's what he's doing. So, for practicing this, what works for me, and I know that everybody's different, and your practice techniques, um, we're all different and unique in that respect, what works for me might not work for you or vice versa, is I've <laughs> told many different people, it's all about what's finding the comfortable way for you. Um, what I prefer to do is I'll get my really good headphones, I'll put those on and plug it into my metronome and turn the volume down. I find the compromising level so I can hear the banjo, but I can hear the metronome click very distinctly. And I'll find a nice quiet spot off by myself so I don't annoy anybody because, you know, you're practicing a muscle memory task, so it's going to be very repetitive until you can get familiarized with it. And what I do is I'll start at a slow pace and I'll sit with the metronome and just do this. And then after I do that for a while, I'll pick up the pace. And then maybe just, we'll say, we'll pick it up even more. Until you can get it to be that machine gun kind of action where it's just, it's there, it's crisp, it's clean, and it's precise every single time. And then once you, you start getting a handle on that, Start messing around with, you know, um, like I said, if I do hammer-ons, pull-offs, anything in this general area of the neck for any of those licks. Um... I'll incorporate that subtle little bend. And it's one of those details that will really help tie your plane together and improve it vastly. Here's some licks that you can use to implement that bend more into your plane. Here's a hammer on. Slower. into a pull-off slower and here's the slide and here all three of those licks combined together in a very standard pattern Slower. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching, but now it's time for the most important part of this entire video. You ready? Get your axe out and start practicing. Without doing that, this whole thing doesn't mean a thing. The next step really is up to you, and just like everything else in life, the more you put into this, the more you'll get out of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.